Whitstable has become the most popular resort in Kent in recent years. It's a town of contrasts with ancient buildings, a working harbour, upmarket restaurants, fish and chip shops, beaches and the nearby rolling cliff top at Tankerton. For pubs, you really are spoiled for choice. There is so much to see and do in the town. The walk will take in just about all of it in a fairly short circuit. We will walk along some of the quaint side streets and take in the beach and the bustling harbour and take a bracing stroll up on Tankerton slopes with some great views out to sea. The pub at the start of this walk is a Whitstable institution, the Old Neptune, known locally as the Neppy. Its fame is down to its location, it's actually on the beach which also serves as its beer garden. The current pub dates from 1897 after its predecessor was completely washed away in a storm. It was rebuilt using timber reclaimed from the original structure and several other cottages that had also been destroyed. The building has warped and twisted over the years owing to its old wooden foundations. Take a look at the crazy angle of the bar which drops down towards the floor. It certainly has a unique atmosphere, however its location means that road access is extremely limited, so for this walk we had to start at one of the town's nearest car parks. Oysters are synonymous with the town. In some years, up to half the oysters sold in London came from Whitstable. Farming oysters is a better description than fishing, as the oysters may need to be sown on the seabed, checked annually, and predators such as starfish removed before the four or five year old oysters are harvested. Good evening everyone, apologies for the poor lighting. We are sat outside the old Neptune pub, which is on the beach in Whitstable in Kent. As you can see, I'm joined by Mark again tonight. Hello again. And we're having half a pint of Orchard View Cider. Very tasty. Mm. What should we give it out of 10? I, I, I'm not very good at this, but <laughs> I would say 9. Spot. A nine, a strong nine. I do like it. I'm going to give it an 8.75, I Ooh. think. It's good, it's not too bad. Um, we had about, an, well, it's about an hour and 40 minutes drive for me, but for Mark it was, what, two hours or more? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to tell him that, because he's way up sort of Plackton sort of way, and yeah, this is like the Kent coast. But anyway, we're here. We're, we're here. Ha we're having a good time. This is the first... Um, camp that you've done in Kent with me. Yes. Isn't it? So that's going to be something different. So we're doing a three mile circular walk from my Kent Pub Walks book. Uh, it starts, as I say, from Old Neppy, as it's known here. And we're heading sort of that way towards Hearn Bay and Reculver. And then we'll be looping back and coming back to here where the cars are. So we've uh, found a little spot, well rather I found a little spot with Candice a few weeks ago when we came up here on a, a hot Friday afternoon found a little spot down near Tankerton I think it is, it's sort of past there, it's not far from Herne Bay and really good spot to camp, it's kind of on the beach in the dunes and um, we're going to go there tonight hopefully I've got my Helm 1 tent, Mark has got his Pro Action 2 man tent, Yes. extra room. So we're due some heavy rain in the early hours of the morning, I think starting at about 1am, so hence why we bought the tents. Um, but for now the weather's quite nice, it has got a bit chillier um, as we're into October, so anyways we're going to get drinking these. Um, and head off on the walk. So enough thinking, let's get drinking. The town's back streets and alleyways served as convenient escape routes for smugglers, as Whitstable was, like most Kentish coastal towns, awash with the illegal trade in tobacco and spirits, as well as people during the Napoleonic Wars. Here we see the fishing boat Favourite moored high and dry between the cottages 
Built in 1890, she is the last oyster yawl to remain in Whitstable. She commemorates the town's oyster fishing and shipbuilding industries. In the 19th century, there would have been a hundred similar boats at sea at any one time. She was beached in 1952, near the site of shipyards, sailmakers and forges that once thrived on the shoreline. Whitstable Harbour was built in 1832 by the Canterbury and Whitstable Railway Company in order to transport goods from the sea to Canterbury. It remains very much a working harbour with an aggregate terminal, fishing and fish processing being the main activities. The harbourside fish markets are popular with both residents and visitors. One of the largest has its own restaurant above it guaranteeing the freshest produce. In the summer there are stands and stalls which pop up serving all manner of fresh traditional seafood including of course the famous oysters. So we're still in Whitstable, we're at the, the harbour now. Uh, up ahead there's a boat that was actually used in the Dunkirk evacuations in 1940. It's quite cool this though because this is kind of like a night hike that me and Mark are doing. You know, we, we got here in the dark, we're going to arrive at our camp spot in the dark but of course we'll be walking back tomorrow in the daylight so still it's something a bit different and it, it just feels more like a little adventure really, it's quite fun. Um, you know, we're getting some really weird looks from people because of course I look like, I look like a a giant mole with my head torch on um, and, yeah, and we've got like camping gear and stuff on our backs but it's just fun, it's different, it's cool you know, give it a go anyway, so yeah, Whitstable Harbour's here Greta was built in 1892 by Stones for a barge sail maker called Hibs at Brightling Sea in Essex Greta has carried various cargoes between Colchester and London one of her more unusual loads included the spars of the German Kaiser's racing schooner. Early in World War II, Greta was commissioned by the Ministry of Supply. She transported ammunition from the army depot at Upnor near Rochester to naval vessels anchored in the Thames estuary. She is also a Dunkirk little ship. Greta took part in the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940 and she's currently the oldest active Dunkirk little ship. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's coming up to 9pm. We've smashed the walkout in about 45 minutes to an hour and we've arrived at Long Rock, just past Tankerton. Uh, but not quite at Herne Bay yet. We're going to head down to the beach shortly and look for a suitable spot or the spot that I found with Candice a few weeks back here. Me and Mark have been sharing these uh, salted peanuts, there's a massive tin of them and first cider, Hawks dead and buried, it's a standard one, using the gas tonight, the Outkick Crackers gas stove, nice and light, got the meths as well, some peanut butter down there and a drink mix and then some more food for breakfast and the walk back. Mark's here. There he is. Evening. First time you've really got a good look at him. He's got trousers on tonight for a change. It was a bit cold the other night. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? So yeah. Trousers are on now. When we was at Jaywick, yeah, it was yeah. it was taters, wasn't it? I was freezing. Um, so you've got your OEX cook set down there. Your Lixarda meths stove. Yep. Little now gin bottle for meths. That's quite cute. I like that. Um, and you had a Wayfarer meal, it was steak and vegetables was steak it? Steak and vegetable. 
and it actually did taste what it's supposed to be tasting of. That's good. Unlike my nice. meat sticks and rice, yeah. Nice. Um, you got bars for dessert in, yeah? Yes, I have. And then, what drinks have you got? I've got Brewdog Punk IPA. Classic, standard, yep. This one looks good. And a quench cake from Brewdog, which is grapefruit and tangerine. Sour. That sounds good. It is nice. I've had it before. That does sound quite good. Excellent. I'll be looking forward to seeing you crack that one open, yeah. So, it's about half past ten now. Um, oh, didn't do a lot of filming when we initially got here. So, we're at Long Rock. The, the sea and the beach is out there. The water's really far out at the moment, so high tide's going to come in probably in the early hours. The rain is due to start about 1am we believe. We'll hopefully be asleep by then. So the lights over there, that's Herm Bay. And beyond that will be Recolver and Recolver Towers and then Margate. Uh, Tankerton Slopes is over there and then past that is Whitstable where we started and where we're heading back to tomorrow. Yeah, so I've got the Helm one. Um, there was some shit down there. We're not sure what shit it was, but we managed to get rid of it. So, needless to say, I'm going to be sleeping up with my head up that end. And then Mark is in the pro action two man tent again. We found out it's a single skin tent. He's got a bivvy bag in case it doesn't keep the rain out. Um, the footpath is only sort of just over there. I mean, it's a rough footpath sort of through all the grass and stuff so he's a bit worried about someone kicking him in the head in the early hours of the morning <laughs> as if there's going to be some sadistic dog walker or something so he's having he's sleeping with his head up this end uh, never a dull moment with mark the posty when you go when you go camping with him um so yeah to anyone uh, uh, like of the, the Canterbury part of Kent, you know, if you see someone camping next to a footpath, kick him in the head. It's probably Mark. Anyway, so he, he's sleeping up the other end anyway, and I've and I've got my head away from the shit end as well. So, like I say, we don't know if it's dog, seabird, anything. It looked more like a, a bird shit. It was a massive shit, but it smelt like dog shit anyway. Um, yeah. I hope you're all enjoying your dinner if you're eating that while watching this. Um, that's about it really, yeah. Sorry about the flashing lights. I say the, the the head torch is telling me that it's low on battery again. But don't worry, I've got another battery that's fully charged. So, oh there's my other two ciders. There's my apple turnover on the floor. Yeah, it's all good so far. It's getting a bit nippy though. Getting a little bit nippy. So... Time for the softies and the down jacket, I think. I'm on my second cider of the night. I've nursed the hawks dead and buried. We're on to the... Uh, where is it? If we can get it to... There we go. Rhubarb and pink grapefruit. Ausker cider. Really nice, this one. Very sweet. And... I had a massive sachet of British Army hot chocolate powder so I've made that up and I gave the rest to Mark and he's wolfed that down he said it was lovely it was some of the best oh it's better than options <laughs> much better it's amazing isn't it rubbish. yeah this one was full of sugar exactly loads of maltodextrin yes, go. exactly we're ready now where, where, we, where are we going to go? We're going to look fox hunting. It's midnight. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> no, no, not shooting them. Oh, right. Looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there was a fox right? over there that was like stalking the camp and stuff. We can't hunt foxes, no, Mark. Would, no, no, we wouldn't do that. Good. We would That's, never do that. That's all right. That's good. I thought they were quite cute, the little foxes. But, you know, mustn't feed them. But they always look so like skinny, don't they? And like yeah, emaciated. Sorry for them. Yeah, you do. You know, go on, have a chip. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, have a ration pack. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of e numbers and <laughs> sugar and fats. I could have given him the last of those salted peanuts. Yeah. 
I'm saying he, I mean, let's be politically correct. It could be female, it, it could be gender fluid, it could be non gender specific fox. You know, don't you oppress me. Um, yeah, anyway, so the hot chocolate was really good. The ciders have been winners so far. I've got the Hawks Urban Orchard. Don't think I'm going to drink that tonight. It's getting pretty cold now. It's midnight. Um, what I was going to tell you about was the update on the rain. The rain has now moved uh, back to 3 a.m. It's going to start. <coughs> Excuse me. More tea, Vicar. Um, so, yeah, it starts at 3 a.m. And it's basically going to be raining through to midday so we're gonna wake up to the rain after our breakfast in the tents in the rain pack up in the tents and then take the tents down in the rain and then most likely walk back to Whitstable in the rain and probably even drive home in the rain and Mark's got a two hour plus journey in the rain soaked yeah have you got waterproofs no Oh, for fuck's sake. What? <laughs> Jesus, I've got one set of waterproofs. You're not... Oh, shit, you're not borrowing them. I've I, got trousers, but I didn't bring them. Well, I, well so you I haven't... Bought, I actually bought over trousers the other day. Do you know, I don't know if I've got a spare, like, emergency poncho you could borrow. If I have, you, you can have that. I'll be all right. But that's it. You're hard. You're a postman. Yeah, I'll just drive home. If you've got... Oh, for fuck's sake. With Jesus. <laughs> if you get stopped, honestly, <laughs> it happens. It happens, yeah. As long as I can produce me, me driving license, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think you've lost it, definitely. Too much sugar. Too much sugar. Maltodextrin in the hot chocolate, innit? Sorry. Yep, exactly. Anyways, yeah. Sorry, I've not filmed much again tonight on this camp. We just have too too good a time to be bothered to film and stuff, and uh, you know it takes effort cooking and stuff, or heating up ration packs. <laughs> <laughs> All you need to know is I'm having fun, and we're safe, and we've not been arse raped yet. It's fine. So uh, you know, it's the main thing. Honestly, as I get older, I just do not care. Anyway, no, nah, it's all good, and um, yeah, we'll probably be getting in the tent soon. So. And then the rain comes at 3 a.m. Great fun. Um, yeah, that is it. I have nothing more to say. So I'll show you what's inside the Helm 1. Still my favourite tent at the moment. And it did survive after after uh, Walberswick in the, uh, the storm on the beach. So I've got the little silver Quechua uh, fold-up kneeling mat. Of course, the footprint. I've got oh, um, two one-litre bottles of water. Trying to sort of go a bit lightweight with those. Uh, a Nalgene bottle, so three litres. Then inside the tent, we've got my Sea to Summit silk uh, cotton uh, silk. Sorry, silk bag liner. This is the OEX Helios EV down bag, it's lightweight, three season bag, I love that uh, OEX Traverse, inflatable mat, full length silver Quetra or Decathlon foam mat I fold it up and it just goes along the back of the rucksack which is the Osprey Talon 44 litre that's in a, a blue sort of trash bag in the, the back vestibule, as is my little OEX chair um, my lantern that I just banged my head on uh, it's an Audi cheapest chips little lantern uh, this is a new purchase it's a Decathlon or their Quechua brand it's a helium inflatable pillow it's got this little sleeve bit I don't know what that's all about um, you can sort of deflate that a little bit more and it's really comfy I think Ben London Outdoors has got one that's where I got the idea from so cheers mate uh, mine's an X display model, so I got it a little bit cheaper, which is quite cool. Folds up really small in its own little bag. Thermarest stuff sack pillow, which has got my extra stuff in like Arctic socks, 
thermal leggings, uh, spare dry socks, stuff like that. Uh, got over the back my waterproof over trousers and rain jacket. Bag for my softy trousers, which I've got on. There's the map and the guidebook in the back. Got all of my food and cooking stuff in there. A little bottle of flavoured water. Then I've got my sort of odds and sods bag. Got a first aid kit, headphones, spare lights, etc. Um, that's about it really, other than the stuff that I'm wearing. Head torch on my head. Um, oh, I think it's just starting to rain. It is so uh um I'll see you in the morning, mate. Good night. And uh yeah we'll we'll sort of aim to get up for probably around near a seven AM now I think because the sort of sun don't come up till like seven or just gone seven now, does it? Yeah, that's right. I think yeah. Anyways, we'll let you know how we get on in the morning. So yeah, it's good night from me. Bye. half past seven and we've been awake well I've been awake for about 45 minutes now just done an English breakfast tea I've had breakfast already just a cereal bar protein bar some kind of fruit smoothie uh, I'm gonna have an energy gel sachet in a minute uh, and then just sort of drinks really. I'm not not gonna have like sort of a, a big breakfast like porridge or anything like that. I've just got loads of snacks with me for this one because I figured we'll just eat while we're we're walking really. So I've got my own homemade trail mix again. There is a new pile of poo just over there apparently. Could be foxes though because we didn't um, see any dogs this morning. So I reckon it's a fox during the night anyway. Lovely. So yeah, that's my uh, homemade trail mix. So it's got unsalted, unroasted mixed nuts, like cashews, almonds, uh, peanuts. I think that's it. They're from a British Army Rat Pack. Got chocolate M&Ms, dried cranberries, and then like dried raisins, currants, sultanas, that sort of thing all mixed in there. So that's more than enough, we've only got like an, an hour's walk in to do really. The walks are, are short like that just because 
it's from like a, a pub walks book and I'm guessing they don't expect people to be like doing serious hikes it's just just more so they can get pissed really and then walk it off a little bit but that's why I try and incorporate like a wild camp with it as well just to make it a little bit more interesting but they usually tend to pack quite a lot of interesting stuff into those three miles whereas you could do like a really long distance walk and it could have three miles of absolutely nothing and be really boring whereas these they tend to cram pack like all the best bits of history, the best views, stuff like that into three miles or whatever so yeah not the longest of walks but still it's fun you can just about make out the Maunsell Sea Forts at Red Sands and Shivering Sands out past the wind farm out to sea and you can see the remains of the pier that's sort of been left abandoned in the middle of the bay over at Herne Bay that's a pretty cool place as well um, I'll show you some photos of it from when I went there a few weeks ago with Candice apparently we are due more rain just have to wait for like a, a window you know get the tents packed away and then walk back and hopefully don't get caught out in it too much but we've got waterproof so well I have as you can see it's still raining we've got everything inside the tent packed up so I'm just wiping the rain off the lens there we go yeah we've got everything packed up inside the tents um, just waiting really for a, a, a gap in the weather really to, uh, to pack the tents away and then head off back that way so in the distance is Tankerton Slopes and Whitstable itself where the cars are so North Sea's out here you can't see it because the, the mist has come over and the rain clouds but you can see like the Thames estuary uh, so oh God, be careful I don't tread in the dog shit and stuff there's, a, there's actually quite a lot of that around here so we're sort of like fairly close to a footpath but it's like where else is there I mean that's all shingle the tide comes in this was the best spot so it's not too bad the people we've, we've walked past have been really friendly and Mark's been chatting to them um, Mark's the diplomat out of the two of us I send him out there to chat to people and he's really friendly with them but you know Mark's Mark's got that friendly attitude and face he doesn't look like it he looks like someone that's going to sell you drugs or a knife at the moment or or like pimp out I don't know his sister or something but he's honestly he's the salt of this earth so he 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 he, he talks to them and stuff and goes it's okay we're not homeless or you know we're not immigrants or anything um, I usually tell him the story and go look just say we're doing the Saxon Shore way or the Kent coastline and we couldn't we didn't make it to our overnight destination I uh, by then they don't really give a shit but yeah yeah he chats to them anyway I don't I I just sort of go all right little smile that's it really if they want to talk to me if they, if they want to come over and start something they can do you know that's it so we'll be ready for them but no nah, I'm, I'm joking now mark mark does the talking so <laughs> mark's not got any rain gear i thought i had a disposable poncho that i could have lent him i haven't i feel bad i'm going to start including one now even with this rain kit as well because you just never know so but I mean at least his air won't get wet so I think he just swore at me anyway right yeah it's all good though um, it's just he's pissing it down so I'm just trying to keep the, 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 the camera and the phone dry so yeah Mark's uh, pro action uh, one person sent that held up really well apparently 
despite it being a single skin tent, bit of condensation on the inside, but he had the bivvy bag, so he was all cushy. And as always, Old Faithful, the Helm One, brilliant. I cannot fault that at all. It has been absolutely chucking it down. That's the first time we've been able to see like south end of the Thames estuary for a while because the clouds are just too heavy. Mark's soaked. All our gear is absolutely soaked. But we're having fun. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we've got all the stuff on our backs. Uh, we've got the rubbish. Yeah, leave no trace. Um, a few dry spots soon to be wet. You can sort of see we might have been in a bit of a dip here because it's all started to flood. So we kind of got out just in time. Well, that's not good. As we were just walking off, literally this is about a metre, two metres from our, our camp spot. We found a used syringe. That is horrible. And a poo bag as well. That is not good. I feel like we shouldn't leave it there, but at the same time you don't want to touch it. What do you think we should do? What do you reckon, Mark? Well, it should be removed or we should put something on top of it to stop it. We could try and pick it up with two... We can't touch it anyway, no, but... No, we can't touch it. That is, that is grim. Anyway, it will be removed. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Yeah. It will <laughs> Just be so removed. you know, look, his face says he means it. Anyways, yeah, just thought we'd show you that. Um, probably not going to want to come here now, are you? I've just ruined that for the tourism. Shit. Right, okay, Mark. Enough talking. Let's get walking. Damn right. To the cars. We are now on Tankerton slopes with commanding views across the Thames estuary and the North Sea. On a clear day we can see the World War II Maunsell sea forts on the horizon behind the wind farm. There's one set of Maunsell sea forts and then there's the other set. You might just be able to make it out. One day, one day I will go out there and film them. About 14 miles out. It's that time of the video again. We found another outdoor gym here on the outskirts of Whitstable. This one looks a bit more stocked than uh, the one at, where was it, Southwold. This has got a bit more stuff here. We've got some resistance equipment over here. Uh, and then I think we've got some cardiovascular work as well, some machines. So I'm going to get uh, Mark training. Go on, Mark, chop chop. 
<laughs> it's only a bit of fun, isn't it? So, let's see what we've got. Seats are a bit wet, come on, limber up, that's it. Here we go, you dress for the part, right. Right, let's get you on. Let's see, we've got a double cross trainer skier thing here. Cool, I might have to have a go on this as well, I think it requires two of us. This would be interesting. Right, go on, you up on first. Oh yeah, it is. It is two people. Hang on a minute, I'm going to fall arse over to here. Oh, don't go so fast. Oh. That age. Feeling the burn? No. In the gold day. Uh, right, go on, that'll do us then on this. It does make you hungry though. Yeah. Well, you get off first, don't want you to fall off. I'll secure you. So that was a double cross trainer, the double cross country skier. You enjoyed that? Yeah. Look at that face, that face you just did. Oh. I haven't, I haven't had a workout in a while. Dirty face, right. Come on, let's get you on. Seated leg press. Ooh. Oh, I think, are we both pushing that or? No, one person can do it. Go on, jump on them. Beginners, 10 presses. Intermediate, 15 presses. Advanced, 20 presses. Always work within your ability. Stop if you feel faint or dizzy. I don't know if you have your... No, you do have your feet up there. Oh. You don't hold on though, I don't think. That's what the animals are for. No, I think it's to help you get up. Oh, I can feel them. Really? Yeah. But you don't you don't get a full range of movement on this though. Oh no, your limit is. Uh, plus I've got short Yeah, that's legs. just gonna buggy it. Full range of movement for a short That's person. gonna buggy your knees up though, surely. Anyway. This, this is what I'm going to start doing, people, in videos. Whether you like it or not, if I find an outdoor gym on my travels, we're going to review it, and we're going to... Whoever I'm with, we're going to get them exercising. Deep. Deep. Stop saying deep. Seriously. Not deep. Not deep. Right, come on, next bit of equipment. So that was the leg press. There's two on each side for some strange reason. I suppose if you want to buddy up. Um, so let's get you on some cardio again. I've only got the old legs, I've got to go closer. You feel like you're moving at an incredible rate? Yes, it's weird. Jay, you look like a serial killer on that, like you're going to plough into someone. Mount the kerb and run someone over. Look at that face, that is a man that is enjoying the outdoors and exercise. Go on, let's go on to the next bit then. Stop. You don't want to stop, you're enjoying this one, are you? The pain. We're Finally, oh. we've got the resistance stuff. Yes. Mirror muscles, come on. I reckon we've got chest. Oh, it's just chest. Cool, they don't think about your scapula, do they? Should be working rhomboids and lats as well. Always work your back. Right. Go on, jump on, either one, because they're both the same. Oh, that looks more like a shoulder press. I'm sorry, that's a shoulder press, that ain't a chest press. I've got to be critical. Right, advance, 20 presses. So it's 5, 10 or 20, you can do 20, definitely. Yeah. Let's start again, one. I've already done. Two, you do more. Three. Four. It's going to give up in a minute. Five. Six, seven, eight, <laughs> go on, keep going, go on, nine, <laughs> ten, I think you've got more in you, go on, eleven, twelve, go on, go on, go on, <laughs> is it actually difficult? I can feel it burning me tricep. Is it actually difficult? Yeah. Go on, do eight more, come on, breast pulls. Three, two, one, let's go, come on, finish it off. One, two, three, one, I can't. One, 
Go on, push, 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 push. Say. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Is it really actually difficult or are you just hamming it for the camera? No, no, I can feel it burning. Oh, Alright, go on, well, you're somewhere straddling between the uh, intermediate and advanced. You're the high end of the intermediates. We'll oh. say you're advanced. Well, I can't even lift my arms. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you superseted that with some press ups. And, uh, and that as well, that would be brutal. What on that, no? <laughs> I was going to then. <laughs> but you got to remember, I did do five before you started filming. That is true, actually. So you've more or less done 20. You're advanced. That's true. I think that's exactly the same as uh, that one. That's a shoulder press as well. It's not a chest press, though. I've got to drive home yet. I oh, know. Anyway, how was that? Stretch out. It Go was on. good. It was good. Yeah? It was, re it was really good. I enjoyed that thoroughly. <laughs> It's not something I've done in a while. No. Especially outside as well. Makes a difference outside. I should charge you, you know, for that. <laughs> I can't lift my arms. Really that bad? <laughs> Brilliant. That's actually effective. Oh. Right, so that's that's Dan I've trained. Oh. Now I've trained Mark. So if you would like to train with me in an outdoor gym, just uh, get in the comments, you know, contact me on Instagram and... Uh, yeah, we'll do a walk, we'll look for somewhere that's got an outdoor gym and we'll make lemonade. Yes, cardio and complete resistance. Positives. Yeah, there we go. Right, anyway, that's far too much for this video on fitness. Anyway, enough of this nonsense. It's an outdoor channel, not a fitness channel. Whitstable Castle the word castle being used in the broadest possible sense used to be Whitstable's manor house, the oldest part being built in the 1790s. It was later used as local government offices with the panelled billiard room transformed into the council chamber. The building has been restored over the last few years. The grounds are now a public park and teas are served inside. Welcome back everybody, we've made it back to Whitstable, to the town car park where our cars are overnight, we're going to go and pay in a minute. Uh, it was funny but it didn't actually rain once we started walking, it stopped and it's been that way since, it's clearing up a little bit. It is quite windy though, apologies for any wind noise. That was a nice little walk back, it's been a good walk overall, it's been a good camp. Yeah, we're soaked and stuff, we're going to be drying the gear out for a while but that's part of it, you know, you're not going to die, your gear's designed to get wet, it will dry, it will survive, it's all good. So, and it was a good test for our waterproofs, I mean, the tent is fine, my waterproofs probably need a new jacket, uh, the rain trousers, they're, they're quite new, they seem to work fine, my decathlon boots, they were like 30 quid, they seem to have done the job, they say waterproof on the side, I've got waterproof socks on as well. My feet feel bone dry, to be honest with you, um, and warm and stuff. Um, yeah, trousers, the over trousers seem to have done the job. I'll just check, check myself, see if I'm damp. No, seems all good. It's just the top half, really. This is an old little Monte Minimus jacket, and uh, it's seen better days. The, the line is beginning to perish. Um, the, the zip on the pocket's gone. So, time for a new one anyway. Uh, I remember it was the first thing I ever won on eBay. And I think it cost me about 85 quid. But these are meant to cost a lot, lot more than that because they're like an ultra light -like rain jacket. If I get another one like this, I'll probably get a slightly bigger size and probably not bright red. But yeah, we'll see anyway. But to be honest with you, with waterproofs, you're going to sweat, you're going to get wet inside. It, it's just one of them things, really. You, you, you're going to get wet. There's only a, a certain amount they'll stop. I mean, it's soaked through and like, this top is damp anyway, but I'm warm, so I'm fine. We'll go and find Mark. I, I thought he was having a piss then for a second. You all right, what are you doing? 
Oh right. Just checking the chains. Oh okay. Right. Well, before I'm gonna sign off anyway. So, uh, cheers for watching, everyone. Cheers for Mark. Cheers, Mark. Sorry. It was good camp. Joyce, it's been good, isn't it? Yeah, it's been different. Fun. It's good with all the the dog shit and stuff and the dogs, dog walkers, the rain. It was nice chatting to them all. Yeah. I enjoyed that. He was the sociable one. It's been good fun everyone. Until next time, take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe, get out there and explore. Cheers guys, see you soon. Bye. You get changed now.